Today is day one of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making smoked ramen with duck breast. The first time I attempted to smoke ramen was in my friend's offset, the second time in my brother's smoker, and this time I'm doing it with a cool gadget I got from my trip to Seattle. I pan seared a duck breast and while it was resting, I started a pan sauce. While the wine was reducing, I cooked the noodles, which are these mama duck flavored noodles. I've been thinking about the spicy strawberry jam I made with my neighbor and decided to add it into the pan sauce. Don't splatter it like I did. Ow, fudge. Just mixed it in and let it continue reducing. Assembled the ramen bowl with all the goodies. I wanted to add the jam into the smoke bowl too, but it wasn't quite ready yet and I didn't want the noodles to overcook. As I turned on the smoke gun, which I'm using hickory wood chips by the way, I realized I didn't really seal the bowl that well. It ran for a little bit and then I let it sit for three minutes. I think we are off to a great start to the series. This dish was rich from the duck breast and also the ramen broth, but then I got some fruity spicy notes from the pan sauce and then a slight smokiness just wraps that all up into a nice little present. Today is day Day two of my instant ramen challenge and I'm heading to Daryl's place to make Naruto ramen with Hainanese chicken. He had salted a whole chicken for 15 minutes and then rinsed it off, stuffed the chicken with scallions, ginger, and garlic, add to a pot of water with more of the same ingredients, and into the instapot. Poultry. Zero minutes. Prep stuff for the sauces while watching holiday movies. Chicken has been cooking for about 40 minutes and we put it into an ice bath. Pour the broth out and it's time to cook the rice. Saute the ginger, garlic, and scallions before adding the rice. Add enough chicken broth to cook the rice and salt some more. A couple of pandan leaves and cook. Then Daryl made a few sauces to go with the chicken. I snuck this ramen into the cart when my mom was in town. It's Naruto chicken ramen. After cooking the noodles, I just assembled everything. I also added a few slices of Naruto maki to keep on theme. This was so good and comforting. The sauce Daryl made was pretty spicy. When I had no noodles left, I just added some of the chicken rice. Today is day three of my instant ramen challenge and I've been thinking about how this would turn out for a while now. Basically air frying rice paper with stuff inside. I'm going to use these Thai yellow curry rice and noodles cup also cutting the most perfect circle of nori that you'll ever see. <laughs> One rice paper, nori, and then I'm mixing some leftover salmon from my Griddle Friday series to the rice and noodle mix, pouring it on and spreading it out. I decided to break the salmon so that the top rice paper could lay flatter. I tried my best to seal the edges and then I got nervous that it was going to rip as I took it off the board. Made the transfer over without any casualties. I did 375 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes and it was cool watching it crisp up. I decided to add an additional one minute at 400 degrees and it looked pretty great when it came out out, the bottom was a bit soft. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was able to hold everything inside and it was easy to make. The only change I would make is to flip it halfway so I could get the other side crunchy too. Let me know if you have any ideas for day four. Today is day four of my instant ramen challenge and I'm going to attempt to make ramen carbonara. I cut up some guanciale and shredded pecorino romano cheese and I wanted to be cool and keep the egg yolk intact but I fudged up the execution, some black pepper and then whisked that all together, browned the guanciale and set it off to the side. I threw the ramen noodles in boiling water and it's not pasta water but I added a ladle full to the other pan, then the noodles and gave everything a toss. Added the egg and cheese mixture and mixed everything up. I can already tell from the texture that I overcooked the noodles. I really didn't need them in the boiling water that long, just enough to heat up. A little more cheese at the end and boom, ramen noodles and carbonara sauce. This was really good. I just wish I didn't overcook the noodles. Tomorrow I'm planning on doing something egg based. Can you guess what it is? Today is day five of my instant ramen challenge and I'm going to make something I've been seeing a lot on the internet recently. Deviled eggs are popular every year, but I feel like this year I've been seeing a ton more videos. So I had the idea to make the deviled eggs, but fry them with ramen dust. The eggs were cooked for 12 minutes, RIP to the broken one. I added cute Kewpie mayo, mustard, salt, pepper, and chopped pickles, mashed it all together, put in more mayo since it looked dry, and some of the shin ramen seasoning, added all of it to a bag and put it in the fridge, flour, egg, and ramen dust. Just fried them until they were nice golden brown, and I don't want to jinx things, but so far nothing crazy or bad has happened during this series yet, which is pretty cool. My scissors were dirty in the sink, so I bit the corner of the sandwich bag off. Cook the other half of the shin ramen noodles and added a little bit to each egg. Squeeze the egg yolk mixture on, then I combined the ramen seasoning with paprika to dust over the top. Crispy with the umami taste of the ramen seasoning, and you can't really go wrong with the delicious egg yolk mix. I would definitely make these again. Today is day six of my ramen challenge and things didn't turn out the way that I envisioned. I made the spicy cheese bowl duck noodles and I'm using these dragon fruit rice paper. My thought process was to make little rice paper roll thingies and mix it in with the noodles. So I added the noodles and leftover pecorino romano that I had from day four, rolled them up and twisted the ends like little candies. They look kind of cute. 
Then I started adding them to the leftover noodles and thankfully realized that they would stick if I mixed it all together. So out they went and I poured in some of this boldac sauce, heated it up and added the rolls back in, got them nice and coated, and then I added them back to the noodles. It needs a little bit of color and it was really spicy, but it was good. I like the chewy texture in with the noodles. I would definitely swap out the cheese. That was a weird move. Let me know what you would have added to this. Today is day seven of my instant ramen challenge and I'm going to make a ramen omelet. Thanks to everyone who suggested I try this. I did two eggs and seasoned with the shin ramen seasoning and paprika mix from the deviled eggs day. I decided on the chopped spaghetti noodles since they're sweet and I thought they would go well with the eggs. Sauteed some onion and bell peppers and then I added the egg and noodle mixture. I let it cook until the bottom was brown. I thought I had the confidence going into the flip but I did not. I was going to flip and add cheese and fold over but whatever. Tried to add the cheese as a crust, kind of sort of didn't really work and it was okay. I thought the shin ramen seasoning would be enough but it wasn't. I think a saltier ramen would have done better in this. Still not bad though. I added some flaky salt at the end which helped a ton. Today is day eight of my instant ramen challenge and I'll be making me go ring on my electric griddle. I got my water to cook the noodles heating up on one side while I cook ginger and garlic along with some veggies on the other side. Then I'm adding a little mixture of soy sauce, honey, and mirin to the veggies, a little more oil, and then some chicken that I seasoned with Tony's. Once I got a little sear, I flipped them and the water wasn't boiling yet but I figured it would be good enough to cook the noodles. Hot and spicy me goreng noodles. Is it just me or did these packets get bigger? Added them all in with a little more sauce, then I just combined everything. If I look awkward while using the spatulas, it's because I am. I'm still getting used to using two at once. Cooked up an egg that has arms and that was the meal. It was comforting, delicious, and filling. How do you make your mee goreng noodles? Today is day nine of my instant ramen challenge. I was with my friend Jess and we were getting hungry, so we decided to make ham and cheese sliders, but with spicy noodles. I started to cut the rolls in half and got nervous, so I tagged her in. But uh, maybe I should have stuck with the job. Maybe come up a little oh, bit. No. You're at the bottom of the <laughs> line, you know? It's fine though. It's just bread, so we were able to fix it. Some slices of mozzarella, some thinly sliced ham, and we just figured two layers would be good. Then Jess did an expert job at laying the noodles. We were just shy of using the two full packs of ramen. Another layer of mozzarella covered in foil and into the oven it went. While it was in the oven, we combined three tablespoons of melted butter, dried parsley, and the shin ramen seasoning and paprika mix from day five. Once the cheese was melted, we just slathered that all over the buns and it was a beautiful sight. Into the oven uncovered for another five minutes and once it came out, Jess was too stunned to speak. <laughs> this was a really good and great shareable snack. The bread and cheese helps with the spice quite a bit. If you want to impress a lot of friends with minimal work, try this. Today is day 10 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm back in which shot to catch up with my friends. I figured they could all use some ramen meatballs. So breadcrumbs act as a binder to keep the meatballs together and I'm going to replace it with dusted ramen. Then I'm going to stuff the meatballs with more ramen to see what happens. Combined a blend of beef and pork ground meat with egg, onion, the instant ramen dust and various seasonings, more instant ramen dust and the ramen soy and sesame sauce. Then I formed them into balls, flattened them and stuffed them. A scale would have been handy at this point to make sure they were all the same size. Into 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. Then I combined the classic mix of grape jelly and barbecue sauce. It's supposed to be chili sauce for the retro recipe, but I figured the swap would be okay. Meatballs were in the oven for 25 minutes and then into the sauce. I wished I flipped the meatballs halfway while they were in the oven to get some color on both sides. And I just let that simmer in the sauce for 30 minutes. People really enjoyed them. Some had three. Next time I would simmer it for probably another 30 minutes, but overall I'm happy with the meatballs since most of them stayed together and they were pretty tasty. Every day is a little different with how I come up with the ideas for my challenges. This one started because Holly said she was going to throw a disco party for a friend. So I started to look up retro recipes and cocktail meatballs were on the list. So I thought, why not make meatballs swapping out the breadcrumbs for ramen dust? And right before I started making them, I thought that was a bit boring. So I decided to try and stuff them with ramen and see what happens. We ended up not having the disco party, but I still made these. Sometimes I get inspired just walking around the grocery store or I see something in the comment section that I wanna try. So thank you to everyone who has been so helpful. Today is day 11 of my instant ramen challenge and I asked Haitham if he could make me a loaded ramen baked potato. Yes, of course. So I made some for my challenge last year, but I've been wondering how they would taste with spicy shin ramen noodles. While the noodles were cooking, he got to breaking up the potato and adding butter, mozzarella cheese, and mixing it all up together. This is one of my favorite things to watch, how all the butter and cheese melts and it all becomes so creamy. Then he added half of the instant noodle seasoning packet and gave it another good mix, made a little bed for some more cheese, combined the rest of the 
seasoning packet to the noodles and added it to the potato creation. Green onions, corn, bacon, jalapenos, chicken, more cheese, and into the oven. And last but not least, a drizzle of sriracha over the top. Last year, I thought the cheesy spicy noodles and potato combo was king, but after trying it with the dry spicy shin ramen noodles, I have to pick this version. Probably helps that I had a master potato whipper making this one. 100 out of 10, I will try this again. Today is day 12 of my instant ramen challenge and I wanted to fly to Japan to try Ichiran, but I guess we have it at home. After I made all my selections, I pressed this very legit looking button and someone took my order. Then a bowl appeared with an egg. I was curious to see how much spice the person next to me got, so I snooped a little bit. Eggs were a nice runny yolk, noodles were firm and slightly chewy, and the broth was rich and flavorful. Not bad for instant ramen at home. I'd probably eat here again. Today is day 13 of my instant ramen challenge and I was going to make air fried avocado bites, but my avocados were not good, so I pivoted to these air fried tofu bites. And I'm going to use chili and lime purple wheat noodles. Just dusted the noodles and combined it with the seasoning packet. Then I'm cubing up the firm tofu that I just ran to the store to get into flour egg gouache, and then the ramen. Then I'm using the seasoning oil packet to coat the outside of the bites. Once everything was nice and coated, I air fried them for 10 minutes at 380 degrees Fahrenheit to be conservative. Then I jacked it up to 425 for five minutes at the end. To be honest, they were pretty bland. I wish I had mixed the seasoning packet with the flour instead so that more of it got onto the tofu, but I did like the crispy texture with the tofu. Today is day 14 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making ghost pepper chili garlic noodles. I was making some spicy chili oil and took about a teaspoon of the ghost pepper mix, combined garlic, green onions, white onion, ginger, and the chili flakes. Then I had some leftover infused oil that I heated up and poured over. And for today, I'm using the spicy soy momofuku noodles, taking the sauce packet out and mixing that in as well, along with some Thai chili hot honey. Added the cooked noodles, gave everything a good mix, and cut some green onions on top. This was very tasty, but not as spicy as I expected. I'd probably do a tablespoon of the ghost pepper mix next time to get some real heat. Today is day 15 of my instant ramen challenge, and we are halfway through the whole challenge. I hope you're all enjoying it so far. I've always joked about making ramen ice cream and today I actually made it with the awesome people at High Hopes. We broke up a bunch of instant ramen bits with black sesame seeds, squid ink flavored noodles, and more sesame seeds, heated up some rock sugar and added five spice seasoning, poured that over the instant noodle mixture and we basically just candied it, added more sesame seeds before it went into the oven, mixed it all, and then it went back into the oven until it's nice and golden brown. Broke that up and then we're testing it out in the soft serve machine, tahini on one side and black sesame in the other. I might be biased and an ice cream addict, but this was so good. It was rich and sesame-y and the ramen bits added a sweet, savory crunch. If you're in the Kansas City area, we'll be making a scoopable version to launch on December 17th and I'll be personally scooping some from 2 to 4 p.m. on that day. Come out and say hi and I've got some ramen stickers to give out too. Today is day 16 of my instant ramen challenge and uh, this one is probably the least visually appealing one that I've done this year. I'm using some leftover brisket that I have and this this is so cool, but I had no idea that this Taiwanese ramen package would have these bags of crunchy twists in them. I combined the sauce packets and was going to pour them over the brisket and noodles, but it wasn't saucy enough, so I was like, I'll just add them to the noodles. But I ended up adding water to the mix anyway, so it was in fact saucy enough, just more dishes for me. Toasted a couple of buns with mayo and then went to chopping up the brisket and ramen. I think I should have chopped up the brisket first and then added the noodles to chop later on. As I kept chopping, I was just thinking, wow, this does not look good. But it was too late. Like you can't unchop things. So I added a bed of noodles on the bun to see if it would help the appearance. It did not. I added the twist and that helped a bit. Also added Kewpie mayo to the top bun. And while it may not look the best, it wasn't too bad. I would have to say the garlic twist saved the day, but I probably wouldn't make it again. Today is day 16.5 of my instant ramen challenge, and I'm trying to redeem myself from yesterday's ramen sandwich. The problem was that the noodles were not appealing, chopped in the meat, and you couldn't really get any of its texture. So today I'm going to make a coleslaw, but add in hard noodles so you can still get the crunch and fried noodle taste. This is my first time making coleslaw, and I accidentally made the cabbage too big and the carrots too small, but oh well. I added the noodles right before I was putting the sandwich together so that they wouldn't get soggy, chopped up the brisket, and added the spicy five pepper blend barbecue sauce. Appearance wise, it looks way better than yesterday's, but does it taste better? Holly was with me, so she tried half of it and she said, I like it. Savory brisket, spicy sauce, and creamy crunchy coleslaw. It was a winner combo for me. Today is day 17 of my instant ramen challenge, and I'm with Baba at Baba's pantry to make ramen ib laban, which translates to ramen and yogurt. He said it's traditionally made with pasta, but we're swapping it out for instant 
instant ramen for this challenge. We're mixing in some of his harissa chili oil into the cooked noodles for one of the layers. Another layer is salted and smashed garlic that is mixed in with the yogurt that has been strained and pressed. You end up with a nice thick mixture. Then another layer is this beef cooked in olive oil and garlic, seasoned with his seven spice blend in black pepper, yogurt down first, then noodles, the rest of the yogurt mixture, the sauteed beef, fresh parsley, and then roasted pine nuts that were cooked in ghee. Lastly, he topped it off with some Aleppo pepper. This was simple quality ingredients coming together to make something rich yet light. I love this so much and it should be easy to recreate at home. Thank you so much to Baba's Pantry for introducing me to this dish. Today is day 18 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making spicy ramen tomato pork dumplings with James. First thing he did when he got to my place was cut Velveeta cheese. If you know him at all, this is no surprise. Then we got to making the dumpling wrap proof in the microwave with the surface lay on. We're using two packages of the Quattro cheese noodles for these and only cooking for about three minutes so be a little undercooked. Rinse to remove starch, pat dry and then roughly chop. And for the filling, combine ground pork, salt, the noodles, a healthy pinch of garlic, finely chopped green onions, MSG, white pepper, soy sauce, soy paste and Shaoxing cooking wine. Mix and then add all of the instant ramen seasoning packets, add three fourths can of tomato soup. James said to mix until the meat absorbs the soup and adding some shredded cold be jack cheese. James showed me a couple of different ways to make the wrappers. Mine were perfect circles compared to his, just saying. We added the filling in a cube of Velveeta. Then we just cooked it in a pan, but of course we gotta add a cheese skirt. I highly recommend these dumplings, unless you can't have cheese, then I'm sorry. Today is day 19 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm just trying to get through some of the stuff in my fridge. I'm using the ground pork, ramen, and cheese mixture that we used in the dumplings yesterday to make egg rolls but in a bowl. It browned really nicely since it had the ramen sauce in it. I added some chopped onion, carrots, garlic, then the cabbage that I expertly chopped up. The nice thing about this was that I didn't have to season anything since James did that for me yesterday. Topped with some expertly chopped green onions. I think leaving this in the fridge for a day allowed the noodles and meat to absorb more of the flavors. You get a bit of the spicy kick from the ramen sauce, but the shredded cheese mellows it out. Lovely crunch from the cabbage and carrots. I'd make this again for sure. I could probably use some fresh peppers next time. Today is day 20 of my instant ramen challenge, and I'm going to try and make ramen yakisoba pan. I've never made hot dog buns from scratch before, but here we go. I used a recipe from Bigger Boulder Baking, but at the last second, I decided to add this extra package of carbonara ramen seasoning that I have, adding a little extra egg and milk mixture to help. This is the brioche version bun, so it also has butter mixed in. I'm just pretending to look like I know what I'm doing here before I put it into a greased bowl and into the microwave, but I won't start it. Just turning on the surface light and letting it proof. I just learned this tip from James. One and a half hours later, I cut them into thirds and shaped them into rolls, proofed for an additional hour, egg wash, and then into the oven for 20 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Made the instant yakisoba noodles with the It Smells Good starter pack, threw in some carrots and cabbage and the cooked noodles. The hot dog buns turned out pretty dense. Either I didn't need long enough or I didn't proof long enough or the seasoning packet threw it off. First one broke, but good thing I made three. I cooked the extra egg wash as a topping and also sprinkled dried seaweed flakes. This was pretty dry. Didn't help that the bread was dense and I didn't add enough sauce to the noodles. Not bad, but needs improvement. I'll also have to add that the carbonara flavor came through in the dough, which was pretty nice. Today is day 21 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making ramen tamales with my friend Chico. He was nice enough to share his mom's recipe and allow me to experiment with some ramen fillings. First, we made the masa dough by combining wheat flour with tamale flour and adding a bunch of seasonings. Then we added hot chicken bouillon water and pork lard. Just mixed it until it reached the right consistency, adding the liquids gradually. He said if your finger comes out clean, then it's the right consistency. Then he put me to work cutting five pounds of jalapenos and serranos, which we used as the fillings. We made some jalapeno and Oaxacan cheese ones, then ones filled with puerco and salsa verde. And then we got to the instant ramen. We decided to pre-cook half of them and then put the other half in dry to see which one came out better. And he also wrapped the pre-cooked ones in foil so it could retain the moisture. The pre-cooked ones definitely came out better in taste and texture since the noodles weren't even cooked in the other one. This is not, oh. <laughs> I really like the tapatio seasoning inside the tamales. I would try the noodles again with different filling combinations. Today is day 22 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm flying to my parents to visit them. I was craving some instant ramen at the airport so I stopped in the Sky Club to level up my Hello Kitty cup. Added hot water and used my current reading book to hold the lid down. Then I went scouting for some potential ramen toppings. I had some solid options to choose from but also some not so ideal ones like oatmeal that may be interesting in 
instant noodles, who knows? Got back to my table and my noodles were done. It was like magic. Egg was a bit overdone for my preference, but I'm not going to complain. The only thing I'm sad about is the fact that there's not a single hint of spice, even though it's supposed to be a spicy noodle soup. Today is day 23 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm visiting my parents so they cooked me their favorite instant noodles. Cooking up shrimp and adding mama tom yum noodles. My dad cut the eggs and got yelled at by my mom for how he cut them. Then she prepared a bowl of chives, lettuce, and sliced beef. This is how my parents used to make it when I was younger too, so it was a nice comforting bowl. And then they scolded me for eating instant ramen for 30 days while we were all eating ramen together. Today is day 24 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making a ramen cheesecake. Some of you may remember the ramen cookie fail from a couple of years ago. I failed to make a crust on the cookie cake, so here's my redemption. Hopefully. Do not try to catch the blender cap while it's falling, by the way, because you will cut yourself, and that's why I'm wearing this glove. For the crust, I'm combining ramen dust, powdered sugar, salt, and melted butter. I'm using about double the butter as a last attempt, which I think will help. I was a bit skeptical about the texture since it was quite crumbly, but you just gotta trust the process sometimes. I pressed it into a cake pan and debated on baking it for a bit before adding the filling. Decided not to. Made the filling, added it to the crust, and tossed it into the oven. Made sure to pray to the baking gods. Also attempted to candy ramen, which Turned out okay, but not as good as the ice cream day. They don't look that appealing, so I'd probably skip that step next time and the moment of truth. I should have chilled it in the fridge for a bit, but I was too excited. This is how it looked the next day. Crust was hard, filling was set, and I'm very happy with how this turned out. I would prefer the taste of graham cracker crust, but this was a cool experiment to try. Today is day 25 of my instant ramen challenge, and this is a bachelor's fridge if I ever saw one. My old neighbor was out of town and asked if I could check on his place, so I said, sure, why not? Great chance to try something from his ramen stash. I mean, I don't think he'll mind. And it was pretty easy to find. I chose the hot and spicy shrimp flavored ones. While I was adding the seasoning packets, I was trying to figure out how I could level this up with the items in his fridge. If I still lived across the street, I could go grab an egg, but I still think this would turn out good. I added some imitation crab along one side and then pulled apart string cheese on the other side. I actually really I like this combo. I'm glad I didn't add any hot dogs because I think that type of saltiness wouldn't have worked well with the lightness of the other toppings. Also, didn't expect the cheese to melt like it did. I should have added two sticks. When I finished eating the ramen, I took back all my Tupperware that he's been hoarding. Today is day 26 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making pork adobo ramen. I'm using Janelle's recipe, but I don't quite think I did it justice. It's a pretty straightforward recipe, but I just think my stovetop has no chill. Like even on the lowest setting, it will boil. It also could be that I'm using a Dutch oven so it retains heat better, but I got everything in the pot and let it cook for a little over an hour since the pork shoulder took a while to get tender. I'm also combining some ramen noodles with the pancit canton seasoning packets that I have extra. There was basically no liquid left in the pot and it all got sucked into the meat. I just need to use a different burner next time and see what happens. Still turned out tasty, but Janelle, please don't yell at me for how it looks. Today is day 27 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm making a vegetarian ramen bowl. I've been curious about these plant-based steak bites that I've seen at the store. They sear up quite nicely, but also quite quickly. Whoop. I didn't add any oil since it said it had some in it. Then I sauteed some mushrooms and olive oil and garlic. I'm using these vegetarian hao hao noodles. It's a Vietnamese brand and I've only tried their shrimp flavor before. Assemble time. And you know what? The steak bites kind of look like grilled pork garnished with some green onion. And I just want to let it be known that I did this perfect sesame seed sprinkle with my left hand. Tried the broth first and the broth is really sweet. It's really good. The steak bites are made of soy. So I mean, you can't really get the steak texture and chew, but I thought they had good flavor to them. I enjoyed this combo. Combo, especially when I made the ultimate bites. Would you try this? Today is day 28 of my instant ramen challenge and I've got a fun day in store for all of you instant ramen lovers. There will be 19 creators sharing their favorite instant ramen recipes. A video will be posted every hour so keep on the lookout and see who each creator passes it off to. And I've mentioned this before that my favorite instant ramen meal is just whatever is left over in the fridge. In this case I seared chicken thigh and then deglazed the pan with some ramen water, tossed in some bell peppers and onions, and then a packet of the bull daxi Seasoning, added in the cooked noodles and more seasoning from the carbonara package. Also frying up an egg in chili oil. A moment of silence please for this egg that fell on the floor. Back to the noodles. Just gave everything a good mix and then towards the end I threw in some crispy rendered chicken fat since I had that left over. Egg is slightly burnt on the edges but oh well. Leftover instant ramen with veggies and protein and of course spice. Now I'm passing it off to the one and only Sinyai Grubs in Thailand. Today is day 29 of my instant ramen challenge and this is my fourth attempt at making ramen from 
scratch. I like to throw it in the 30 day challenge, even though it's not instant. This one actually took over the course of four days and it's by far my best. On day one, I made the noodles and soaked kombu for the tare. Then on day two, I rendered chicken fat to make scallion aroma oil and finished cooking the tare. Since I'm making tonkotsu, I chose a lighter sake based shio tare. I started off day three by searing off pork belly, vacuum sealing it and threw it in the sous vide. Also steeped eggs in their ramen egg mixture, took the pork belly out of the sous vide after 12 hours. Then that night, I started cooking down the pork bones to make the broth. Day four was preparing the toppings, chopping the green onions, cutting the nori into uneven squares, slicing the chashu and applying some fire. I finished up the broth after 17 hours of it cooking and it was just putting everything together at that point. I just want to give a huge shout out to the ramen lord for the ramen cookbook that he has out on the internet for free. I just followed along and it made everything so approachable. It was rich and creamy and the noodles were bouncy and slightly chewy. I'm so happy that it turned out great. Only one day left in this challenge. What do you think I should make? So I'm not quite ready yet to end my 30 day instant ramen challenge. So today is day 29.5 and if you're hungover, this may be the cure for you. The noodles I'm using today are quite special. It's the collab between Shin Ramen and Jay Fai who does the famous crab omelet in Thailand. This one comes with the tom yum paste. And James, I don't know what I've done to deserve you as a friend, but thank you so much for sharing this package with me. I was going to pair these noodles with the crab omelet, but since I already gave that a try last year, I felt like Rapau stir fried chicken with basil would be a good way to enhance the noodles without burying the original flavor. This is a recipe I'm using from Thai Orchids Cookbook. After I cooked up the chicken, I made the noodles and the instructions were to add the paste in the bowl. Also topped it off with some fresh Thai chili peppers and basil. I can confidently say that out of all the spicy, soupy instant ramen I've had, this is my favorite. It's like the mama tom yum flavoring mixed with the shin ramen seasoning and noodles. It's spicy, sweet, and sour, and the ground chicken adds the savoriness to balance it all out. All right, now I have one day left or should I make it too? Today is day 29.75 of my instant ramen challenge and I just couldn't end it without trying these pot noodles that I bought a whole box of. When I saw that they were beef and tomato flavored, I automatically thought to make a pizza. But if I made a regular flat pizza, then the noodles would dry out or burn on top. So my solution was to make a deep dish pizza. I'm using a cake pan since I can get the high edges in it. I've had a lot of people ask me to try pot noodles, so I'm excited to finally give them a try. Got the dough all smushed in the cake pan and then the first layer, I put down some shredded mozzarella. I had to strain the noodles so it lost a little flavor, but I didn't want it to be all watery inside. Some leftover dumpling filling for my ramen dumpling day and the pizza sauce. Put it in the oven and about halfway through, I added aluminum foil so it could protect the top while I made sure the meat cooked. I gotta say, this was actually pretty freaking good. Good looking crust. It was carbs on carbs, but the tomato flavored noodles worked well with the crust. I probably would add more pizza sauce and sausage next time. Really happy with how this turned out. Today is day 30 of my instant ramen challenge and I'm ending on a request that's been made for the past two years. They wanted me to recreate the cow soy from MasterChef Australia. The problem that the contestant Jess had was that she only had 15 minutes to assemble the dish on the spot. So she wasn't able to get the fried noodle portion out, but the judges still loved her dish. Good news is that I have unlimited time so I can nail frying the noodles. This is the recipe that she's released using the bulldog noodles. I just made sure to give the noodles a cold bath and rinse so that they hopefully wouldn't stick while frying. And luckily they turned out great. I got a nice golden color on them and the shape was too big, but that was an easy fix. The spicy ramen seasoning and this cow soy is such a great spicy compliment to the coconut milk. I couldn't have wished for a better comfort food to end this series. So I've been getting some messages that this year's ramen challenge has been more boring than the others. I've been thinking about it and I think that some part of it may be that I have a little bit more experience in the kitchen so I can rule out half of the what ifs that I may want to try. Because from experience, I know it wouldn't work. My first three years, there were just so many unknowns. I still really enjoyed this year's challenge. I learned how to make dumplings and tamales from scratch while catching up with both old and new friends. I got to include amazing local owned businesses and eat foods from different cultures. Also tried a bunch of different instant ramens that I hadn't tried before. I'm not certain if I will do it again next year, but I do want to thank you all for entertaining the series and watching the videos.